Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tech Tutor. Today we're going to talk about a more advanced topic which is the Java Spring Framework. I like to use the Spring Initializer tool which can be found at start.spring.io and when we go there we can select different dependencies and we'll also select a Maven dependency manager tool. This is created by Apache. So we'll select some dependencies. We won't necessarily use them in this video but we'll use them in the future videos. And so let's go ahead and start talking about it. Let's get started today by going to start.spring.io. As you can see on this website, it will give you many different options to help you generate a basic Spring Boot project. And for our example today, we will leave these defaults on the left. So we're going to use a Maven project. This helps us manage our dependencies. So you're able to download open source project code and utilize it in your project. We're going to leave the default language as Java. The Spring Boot version we will use is 2.4.0. And we're going to leave these default folder structures. So our group will be com.example, the artifact will be demo, and the name will also be demo. If we change this, you can see that the naming convention is to have the artifact and name be the same. And as you can see, the package name is the group followed by the artifact. So we'll go ahead and change that back to just demo. We'll leave it as a jar and Java 11. Now let's add some dependencies. For this project, we're going to add some dependencies that we will use in this video. Others we'll go over in the future. So we'll add Lombok. We will add Spring Web. This one is needed for the video, so that way we can get a web server spun up and it will stay running. It won't just run the Java application and close it. Spring configuration processor. And lastly, let's add Spring Boot Actuator. Go ahead and click Generate. And then click OK to save it. This will go to your downloads folder. So let's go ahead and unzip it from there. All right, here's my downloads folder. I'm unzipping it now, extract all. I'm going to go ahead and remove this demo because the way that the Spring Initializer creates this is it's going to end up creating a folder inside of a folder if we don't take off that demo portion. So let's go ahead and just extract it directly to downloads. And now you see if we double click demo, we've got our sample Maven project with Spring Boot dependencies right here. So we're going to go ahead and import this into IntelliJ. Let's open IntelliJ. Once IntelliJ is open, go ahead and click Import Project. For me, it's going to be under C Users my user directory, and then there is a downloads folder. So I'm going to go there. So to my downloads folder, and then I will click the demo folder that we have created from the zip file. I'm going to import a project from an external model, which is Maven, because that is what we selected as the project type in Spring Initializer. Click Next. We'll leave these defaults. Click Next. And now you'll see that it detected the Maven projects that you want to import because it saw that POM file, the POM.xml. So we're going to go ahead and click Next. I have Java 11 set up on my IntelliJ, so I'm going to use that and click Next. And if you need help setting up IntelliJ, please take a look at my video on IntelliJ with Java, and I'll put that in the description. Click Next. Click Finish. We'll close out this tip. And now to build our Maven project, we're going to open up this Maven tab and then double click on install. This will download the dependencies from the Maven POM that it found, which are Spring dependencies. We also put Actuator and Lombok and Spring Web. Now open up your project structure. We're going to go to the Java class that we want to run. So we're going to right click demo application and we're going to click run. You'll see that it started up. 
it's actually running on port 8080. This is configurable, but for the quick start video, we're just going to leave the default port. And you can also see that it is exposing two endpoints underneath actuator. I did this so that way you could see what a health check endpoint looks like. So we'll open up our browser to see that this application is actually running without any sort of front end yet. You still could have a health endpoint to check to see if your server is running properly. And then in Firefox, you can now see that the actuator dependency has created an API endpoint. This is under the host slash actuator slash health. And this allows us to know that our server is up and running. We can use this health API to make sure that if there's any downtime, it is tracked. If we had something that was constantly checking this API, it will let us know when our server goes down. And that about covers it for getting started with our basic Java Spring application. Thanks for watching this introduction video on Maven and the Java Spring framework. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please click the like button and be sure to subscribe for future content. Next time we will talk about other Maven dependencies and I will show you one of my favorite tools for testing web services, which is called Postman.